guys and welcome back to the channel. My name is Katie. Today I'm going to be doing another how-to power tool video. At the time of filming this I have one other of these videos and it's super niche. I started with how to use a biscuit joiner. But today I am going to take it all the way back to the other end and talk to you about a drill which is probably one of the first power tools that most people will ever use. Wherever in time you are watching this video, I will have the playlist for all of my how to use power tools videos linked down in the description box below. Throughout this series, I'm planning to talk to you guys as if you are my 19 year old self that does not know a screwdriver from a drill. So they will be as beginner friendly as possible, but also as comprehensive as I can think to make them. So to begin at the beginning, this is a drill. My drill is a 20 volt lithium ion by DeWalt. 20 volt is the power in the battery, lithium ion is the type of battery, and DeWalt is of course the toy maker. So on the top of the drill is where you can change what gear your drill is operating in. Three being the most powerful and one being the slowest. And then once you have your gear selected, you can change the speed and the power of the drill even farther by turning this knob with the numbers on it and again, the higher numbers are more power and the lower numbers are less. So let's say I'm trying to attach this coat hook with these really tiny screws that come along with it. If I have my drill settings all the way on high and I just hold down the trigger without being careful, my screw will start to spin inside of the wood and that means that it's been stripped out. So instead of the screw being threaded down into the piece of wood, it's virtually just spinning inside of it with nothing to grab onto. And I can't put my drill in reverse and back it out because it doesn't have any wood to grab onto. And also this coat hook is not effectively attached because I can just pull it right out. So if you find that trigger control is an issue for you or if you're just acclimatizing yourself to the drill and you want to be careful, the solution is to turn your settings down all the way especially for something this tiny, to get all the way down to one and one, and your drill will go much slower. And some drills will stop themselves completely when they meet resistance. Mine doesn't, but as you can hear, it starts to run a lot slower, and that's a good indicator that your screw is tight and it's time to let off the trigger. As you get used to the drill, in most cases, you'll probably have your power and your speed turned all the way up so that you have all the power when you want it, and you'll just use the pressure of your finger on the trigger to adjust how much force you're actually putting behind something. Even with my settings at the top at three and 22, I can pull slightly on the trigger and get a little bit of force or I can go all the way and really get after it. Still looking at the top of the drill, this skinnier black ring is where you adjust the mode that your drill is operating in. To help us out, the modes are depicted in pictures. So for the drill to operate best, you want your indicator pointing at the screw when you are screwing something in, pointing at the drill bit when you are drilling a hole, and pointing at the hammer when you are using the hammer drill function to drill into masonry material. So all of those modes and options are kind of best practice, but honestly, once you buy it, you can do whatever you want with your drill. I personally don't ever worry about these two settings. As far as how I can tell the drill operates, they're kind of interchangeable, but you absolutely don't want to ever use the hammer drill setting unless you are trying to drill into something masonry. The reason being that the way the hammer drill function works is in addition to spinning your drill bit, it also has a slight forward and backward hammer and that is not good for any application except drilling a hole in concrete. So all of those modes and features are things that you will use more occasionally with your drill so let's move on to the parts of the drill that you'll be working with almost every time you're using it. This is your directional button that will determine how the drill is spinning. If you have your forward facing arrow pushed in your drill will spin clockwise which will screw in a screw. And if you have your rear facing arrow pushed in, your drill will spin counterclockwise and that will back a screw out. The other time that you use these buttons is when you're changing your drill bit. To change the drill bit, you'll need to manipulate your directional buttons and hold on to this part of the drill. So if the forward side of the button is pushed in and I hold on to this and I pull the trigger, the place where my drill bit goes gets smaller. And if I push in the reverse side, 
it gets larger. So that feature enables you to work with all different sizes of drill bits. If I want to use this quarter inch drill bit, you can see this is all the way closed. So I'll put it in reverse, hold this part until I have enough room to insert the drill bit. And then to tighten it up, I will hold the bit in here, push in the forward button. I'm not holding the drill bit so you guys can see, but you wanna hold the drill bit while you do that. And the reason for that is that you want to keep your drill bit in the center while you are tightening it. To show you why, I'll tighten it real quick without holding on. And you see what happens. So obviously we can't drill anything that way. So hold it in the center while you're tightening it. And then once this part of the drill starts spinning in your hand, that means it's tight. So you wanna let off the trigger. And again, holding onto this part of the drill, spin it counterclockwise. You'll hear it click. And what that does is it tightens it even more. That extra step of hand tightening is important. Otherwise, what will probably happen is as you're working along and going from forward to reverse, drilling in, drilling out, this bit will come loose. Whereas if you take the time to tighten it manually, it doesn't do that. When you're ready to drill your hole, make sure that your forward arrow is pushed in. If you don't, the drill bit will just kind of spin and not bite into the wood and smoke and start a fire. So, Make sure your forward arrow is pushed in. Make sure that you're holding your drill straight up and down as well as side to side so that the path that the drill bit is going to take is completely straight and isn't going to split out one side or the other of your material. It's easiest to start a hole with just a little bit of pressure on the trigger. And once you know you're in the right spot, gradually pull the trigger tighter until you have the hole. If you are drilling a shallow hole, you probably will not need to throw your drill in reverse in order to get it out. You can just kind of like drill it as deep as you want and then pull the drill back. If you're done drilling your hole and you can't pull the drill out, just throw it in reverse and it will back itself out. So now if I'm done drilling holes and I want to screw something in, I will throw my drill in reverse. Hold on to this part. If you did what I said and hand tightened it, you'll probably have to have a really firm grip in the beginning. But once it gets past, it's easy. So I'll loosen it up so that I can remove the bit. And then I'll throw my drill in for a gear to tighten in this bit. There you go. This is sexist, but ladies, listen up. When you are screwing a screw in with a drill, you have to make sure that you are pushing down with enough force so that this bit stays in the grooves of this screw. And all you have to do is listen to know if you have enough force or not. This is a good sound. This is a bad sound. Anybody that works a lot with drills will make fun of you, but more importantly, what happens if you're not holding these two things tightly together is the inside tips of this pattern will get broken off and then this screw will be stuck. You can't push it any farther in or take it back out because the bit can no longer manipulate it. Also, you'll bend over the ridges of your bit and that ruins your bit the same way because it can no longer manipulate a perfectly healthy screw. And if you're starting out with a bit that is folded over and questionable, it will probably ruin the next screw that you work with that was perfectly good to start out with. So once your screw has a good bite in the material and you don't have to worry about it bending one way or the other, use those muscles. What I and a lot of people who are not women like to do to make the job easier is work with screws and bits that have a star pattern. Because there's more points of contact in this pattern, the bit stays in the screw a lot more easily without as much effort required from you. So if you just can't hold it together and you keep ruining your screws and your bits and people keep judging you, try a star bit. I hope that was a good introductory overview. I love hearing from you guys, so let me know in the comments down below. Do you have any other questions about using a drill? Or what are some common problems that you run into when you're using your drill? Guys, if you liked this video, please take a minute to hit that like button. If you want to see more of me, subscribe. If you want to see more how to use power tools videos from me, or if you don't, 
Let me know that in the comments down below. And as always, thank you for watching.